There are a lot of videos out there on how to weather freight cars. This one is mine. In this video, we're going to weather these five freight cars. Four of them are Atherns, and the Alberta Hopper is from Intermountain. Here you can see the before and after photos, so if you like what you see, keep watching the video. Some of the techniques we're going to look at in this video include airbrushing, sponge painting, washes, and the three P's of weathering, powders, pigments, and pastels. One of the most important things that you can do to keep your freight cars from looking like a toy is to paint the trucks. So here I'm removing the trucks from all the freight cars. I put each one in its own little bag so I can keep them separate so I don't mix up the trucks from one car to another. I like to use a two-step process for painting the trucks. The first step is to paint on Vallejo track primer. This is a really interesting color, kind of hard to describe, but it's kind of a mix between brown and gray. It's a really useful color for anything that's metal that you don't know what color to paint it. You'll note that I leave the wheels on the trucks. I don't bother to paint the wheels. That's just a little bit too much effort, and I don't really notice the wheels being a problem as I see the trains run around my layout. The second step of the process is a wash. This is AK Interactive's track wash. And so, yeah, I'm using track primer covered by track wash. I'm basically painting the trucks as if they are armored vehicle tracks. This is an enamel product. You could just use an enamel wash of a rust color. These things are a little expensive, but they last a long time. So you're probably going to have to buy them on eBay and pay the shipping and everything but it's still going to be worth it because of how long they last. I think I'm still on my first bottle. Just for this video, I tried to do something different, and here I'm using Vallejo Rust Texture on the Penn Central boxcar. This is another really useful rust product. Again, it might be kind of hard to find. You might have to buy it off eBay, but one bottle will last a long time. No matter what kind of weathering you're going to do, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is spray your freight car with some kind of a matte sealer. Tester's Doll Coat is my preferred, but there are other good ones such as Tamiya Flat Clear. The reason you want to do this is because paint doesn't really stick to the manufacturer's surface of the freight car. On some of the freight cars here, before I get to any weathering, I want to fade away some of the paint for the logos. The way I do this is to try to mix a matching color from various colors that I have and then kind of dry brush the color over the logos. It doesn't have to be an exact match, it just has to be close. If it's not an exact match and you want to kind of blend it in a little bit, then dry brush over some of the other panels even if there's not a logo underneath. I did this for the Penn Central car and for the two Golden West Services box cars. For this boxcar, I want to apply a little bit of rust. I like to use Vallejo Hall Red, or any other manufacturer's Hall Red, or any rust color that you like to use, and I apply it very carefully with a sponge. I like to use natural sponges that you get at any art supply store. In this case, I'm being pretty light with it, and I'm just kind of going around the corners and some on the surface.
Isopropyl alcohol can remove acrylic paint and I have never seen it damage the factory paint on freight cars. Here I'm taking away some of the paint that I didn't like and I'm using a Q-tip dipped in isopropyl alcohol. On this box car, I'm doing some rusting with pigments. Pigments are different than powders. Powders are very fine and pigments are a little more clumpy. Powders are intended to go on dry, although you can use some kind of a liquid to get the powders on. Pigments, you almost always have to use a liquid. They almost never go on dry. Here I'm just using paint thinner. After you apply the pigments, you're going to want to spray with some kind of sealer so the pigments don't come off on your hands as you handle the freight car. Now I'm applying a wash. In this case, I'm using AK Interactive's streaking effects for winter vehicles. They also have a Starship streaking effects, which is basically the same thing if you can't find the winter vehicle streaking effects. So I guess Starships get weathered in space. Anyway, this is an enamel product, and I prefer enamel products for washes like this because they don't leave water spots. These also dry pretty quickly. If you don't want to buy one of these washes, another thing you can use is artist oils, but those take a long time to dry. I'm applying the wash to the two shorter box cars and also to the hopper car. On this box car, I wanted to give a little more of a rust wash, so I'm going back to the AK Interactive track wash. This is the same wash I used on the trucks for the freight cars. Box cars typically rust more on the doors than the rest of the surface. And so that's where I'm focusing most of the rust. At this point, I wasn't quite happy with the longer Golden West box car. So I went looking through my pictures of freight cars for some inspiration. And I found this photo. Here in this close-up photo, you can see the rust spots that are almost like measles on the side of the boxcar. This is pretty common on boxcars and also on hoppers. I'm going to use Vallejo Rust Texture to try and imitate this effect. And to do this, I'm using a flat brush where the bristles have been cut off down to about 3 millimeters. And I'm kind of using the edge of the bristles and dabbing to sort of get that horizontal pattern that you see in the photo. The reason I have these brushes with the bristles cut off is because these are what you commonly use to apply weathering pastels. We'll see that here in a second. It still needed a little something more. If you look at the original photo, there was a little bit of gray on the side of the boxcar. So here I'm dry brushing some gray down the panels. The rust spots didn't quite look right, so here I am adding a little bit of orange paint over the rust spots to give it a little more color variation. But even this wasn't quite going to get it to where I wanted it to be. I wasn't happy with this one section, so here I'm removing some of the rust with isopropyl alcohol. Finally, I remembered that I had a set of pastel chalks, and so here I'm applying some powder with the pastel chalks. And this is where I'm using one of the brushes with the bristles cut down to about 3 millimeters or so. After you apply anything with pastel chalks, you're going to want to apply a sealer to keep the powder on the freight car.
So here you can see the original freight car and my final rust spotted model. Uh, it needs a little more orange. There's just not enough color variation on the rust spots. One of the simplest things you can do to weather your freight cars, if you're not going to do anything else, is to apply some weathering powders. So here I'm just using a dark brown powder and I apply them with makeup brushes. This is actually the first time we've seen the tank car get any weathering. I haven't used any of the other techniques on it yet. Tank cars don't seem to last as long as box cars. You'll see a lot of old beat up box cars running around on the rails, but tank cars are often new and, and sometimes even shiny. So I wanted to keep the weathering subtle. Something else I like to do on all my freight cars is spray the underside of the freight car with some kind of a dirt color. In this case, I'm using Vallejo Concrete, which is the one I use the most often. I just don't like the look of a freight car where the underside is the original color as it came from the factory. It needs to have some weathering, even if the car is going to look relatively new on your layout. I think it's really worth it to spring for a high quality airbrush and air compressor. It costs less than most DCC locomotives. Now we can look at the final products. Here's the tank car. All it received was some weathering powders and then some spraying underneath with Vallejo concrete. With the Penn Central box car, we took some paint off of the logos. We used a wash, some airbrushing, and weathering powders. We also applied a little bit of rust with a sponge. I like the original look of the Alberta hopper, so I wanted to give it a fairly modest weathering. All we used was the wash, the weathering powders, and the airbrush. The only rust is on the trucks. This Golden West boxcar was a little more of a struggle. We didn't use the washes, and so we had to come up with something else to give it a little more weathering. And that's where I went to the rust spots. I also did a little bit of rusting on the roof with the pigments. This Golden West boxcar got the most treatment. We faded some of the paint. We used the streaking for winter vehicles wash. We used a rust wash. We applied some rust with a sponge. And then we did the weathering powders and airbrushing. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments which one you like the most or if you don't like any of them. And if you made it this far, thanks for putting up with my awesome new voice.